Let's uh, well, get our last talk of the day going here. So um, thank you for sticking with us. Uh, thank you for coming again. It's been a great day. Uh, final event, our final talk of the day uh, is going to be by Callan Campbell. Callan comes to us from New Jersey? Oakville. Oakville. Uh, and uh, he just actually came from the uh, one down in Mississauga. He just did this talk down in Mississauga. So Sharon was going to Mississauga. He's coming from Mississauga. So we tried to double up on speakers if possible. So. Callum's going to talk to us about Azure Event Grid. He's going to uh, finish up the day strong. And uh, yeah, I'll kick it over to Callum. So thank you very much. Thank you. So um, my topic's on Azure Event Grid. Anyone here used Event Grid? Anyone use serverless computing on Azure? Or, or similar like I'm, 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 I'm not done lambda and API. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you guys have some time. Yeah. Okay. No, so no, I, can you assume we have no clue? I'm going to assume you have no clue. I just want to change the audience. So I'll do a very high level introduction. I'll do some demos. Uh, I'll follow up with some questions. So about me, I've been developing software for about 20 years, uh, primarily in the Microsoft space. So uh, .NET, SQL Server, Azure, all the different mobile platform Microsoft has done over the generations. Uh, and recently uh, in Azure and uh, Xamarin. So my slides are, or my contact information is there. I'm also the co-creator of a .NET logging tool framework, live viewer application called Reflect So if you guys have any questions uh, about that, just reach out to me. The slides, Ken's gonna post up uh, somewhere. On so GitHub. Um, all the content will be there. And again, feel free to reach out to me anytime, ask questions or anything related to Azure. More than welcome. So uh, in Azure, so uh, assume you guys don't know anything about serverless. So there's three different types, three offerings of serverless in Azure. So we have functions, uh, so it allows you to process uh, serverless code inside of Azure. You're not really deploying any sort of app per se. It's just you have code running. Uh, there's logic apps, so things this uh, talk in the cloud, but very uh, different, but still like you get the orchestration of connecting uh, things together. Um, and then you have event grid. So I'm going to talk about event grid, but I'm actually going to loop in functions and serverless uh, and logic apps into my demo, so you get a taste of all three. Um, and we'll go from there. So what is event grid? So event grid is essentially a new messaging service that's based uh, was developed for event-based architectures. It's a fully managed event routing service uh, using a pub sub model. Uh, has built-in support for receiving events coming from other Azure services. So it was originally developed internally to app by Microsoft for Azure to allow that anytime you bring VMs up and that kind of stuff. So this is how it talks to all its own internal services. And then last year it was uh, made public. So there's a few, maybe a dozen services you can listen to right now for maybe from a DevOps perspective about you want to know when users are added to your subscription or removed or when. SQL servers, provision, that kind of stuff. You can get invented from an operational point of view to so you know when that happens. Um, it also provides, so handles the routing and delivery of events from any number of sources to end subscribers. But uh, also does filtering. So through your routing, when you send messages, so it's like going to a queue uh, and a topic per se, um, you can filter out what happens with those events. It's also <coughs> agnostic, so it's uh, any language and any platform can use this. It's not tied to uh, just inside Azure. Well, the event grid is Azure, but you can use it outside of Azure. You can use it in .NET or Node or Java. You can use it on-prem, you can use it inside Azure, all the things. So why use event grid? So event grid, it was designed for reactive event-driven applications. So it's perfect for microservice applications, perfect for serverless. Um, has built in reliable event delivery uh, for massive scale. So, based on, so it's very similar to Event Hub or uh, IoT Hub. So, all the messages that come in, they'll get routed and if it needs to, we'll scale that. And then when the load goes away, we'll scale it back down. Um, also, has high availability, consistent performance, and it handling the dynamic scale. So this really, event grid really plugs the gap. It's uh, an existing gap in Microsoft's serverless platform. 
Uh, so it brings together different publishers and event consumers in a very loosely coupled way. So the anatomy of event creators. So we have events. So this is what happened. So it could be something in Azure. I created a DM, I added a user, I removed a user. It could be something external to Azure. It could be you're using this in your own application. I'll do that kind of a demo scenario where I'm going to tap into a event grid to notify other services that I want to do something. Um, it has event sources and publishers. So this is where the event took place. Um, so again, uh, Either it's coming from my own application if I'm doing a custom topic, or it's happening inside Azure. Um, so topic is really the endpoint where publishers will send events to. Um, you have event subscriptions. So this is the endpoint that will receive the message. Um, you can have multiple, and then you can have multiple event handlers on that subscription. And then we have filters, which I talked about before. So that can be applied to any event type um, or event subject. So we look at this diagram here. On the left here, we have all our event publishers. So we have all the Azure specifics. So we have blob storage, storage, subscriptions, uh, resource groups, event hubs, IoT, and then custom topics is where you create your own topic. Um, then we have event subscriptions on the right. So this is where you now, based on that event, you can uh, redirect it to an Azure function. You can set it to a logic app. You can do uh, run Azure automation on it. Uh, you can send it to an external webhook. Uh, event hub, so there's all kinds of different event handlers you can uh, leverage for this. And EventGrid is similar to uh, Azure Service Bus in that a topic is an endpoint that receives messages and a subscription is used to receive the messages through that topic. It will eventually be handled uh, through the listener. Uh, these concepts are basically the same, but they differ very in how they work. So some of the value added of using event grid, so it eliminates long pulling and hammer pulling. So you'll just get evented when something happens, rather than say, is it done, is it done, is it done, that kind of scenario. It also has built-in native integration. So point and click inside Azure, you can just really create events, uh, hook up to them without really deploying any sort of new application or code for them. Um, you can build in, uh, you can react to events with surplus code. So maybe you do want to push something up. So you can use Azure Functions or Logic App. To, uh, to react to those events. Um, it also allows you to fan out. So for one event, you can fan it out to many different uh, um, endpoints. Not endpoints, but uh, subscribers. It also has reliable delivery. So a point, it's a 24-hour retry policy. I'll go into details specifically about retry. And you can do filtering. So some events can only go to some of the subscribers. Uh, and you can have it just go to everybody if you want. It really makes a part of your event part of a larger ecosystem. So how does it compare to other messaging solutions inside of Azure? So the time of this slide is there's about six different uh, messaging uh, options in Azure right now. So on the left you have Event Grid. So it's uh, it's a very similar to Event Hub and IoT Hub. So it's perfect for event ingestion. Um, the other place it's the same is for so messaging across the board. You can have multiple consumers, you can have multiple senders. Uh, it's not great for decoupling, per se, um, but it's the only one really used for PubSub model. And the other difference is, other than storage queues, it's got a small quota of only 64K. So the differences with two other uh, message queues specifically. So Event Hub, you might ask, well, why would I use Event Grid versus Event Hub? So Event Hub is really used for ingesting high velocity telemetry that's coming from some sort of stream service or an IoT device uh, where you have a lot of data coming in. So it's not really meant for that, whereas Event Hub is. And Service Bus is really meant for your business enterprise applications where you want those more robust kind of queues, dead letter queues, and, uh, and so forth. Whereas event grid is really, it's, it's a serverless uh, offering. It will dynamically scale. There's nothing for you to uh, manage, per se. Um, so it's perfectly, it fits perfect in those situations where you want to do serverless or microservice. So with Azure Event Grid, uh, it's really centered around speed, scale, breadth, and low cost. It's a very lightweight notification of a condition or state change. And then rather being uh, a very generic, or general generic messaging service. 
It's built specifically for serverless and microservice architecture. But, but by serverless, you just mean like virtual machine? Mm -hmm. No, so serverless is still servers, but you're not, it's nothing that you need to manage. So there's no infrastructure, there's no VM, you just, you have a, so serverless would be like where you're using like a, like Azure function or logic app. So you, I'll show you when I get to the demo, I'll use both, but there's nothing for you to deploy. You just configure it, you run it, uh, and those operates also will dynamically scale up and down based on. It, it is fair to say that you call a function in the cloud, yeah? yeah? You just know the function to call, and the cloud takes care of the infrastructure, scalability and everything. Now, uh, Azure functions, as I've gone through before, you can run those on an app service plan. So if you do have VM, you can run serverless functions inside your VM for no cost. But if you want more of a consumption, dynamic scale, then there's that option too. So event greed and event hub. Uh, I understand that uh, event hub is for high velocity uh, telemetry data. So that means if there are a bunch of data and telemetry data for like IoT or anything, event grid is not a, a right solution. Does it, right. If we use it, does it? I mean, uh, what, what is the drawback? Is it the performance? Um, I think event hub will give you greater performance, but it's also it will also decouple that event from what's being uh, where it's being sent to. So it's just they're very similar conceptually, but they're for fully different reasons. Yeah, and actually that's why I'm pretty much confused uh, between both. I'm still not clear why can't I use event read when I have a uh, velocity of data. Because it's more for streaming. So event so event grid is perfect like uh, single scenario where like uh, so my application that I'm gonna demo it's a HR application, right? So when I add a user, it's like one event, it's very specific. Where in the stream it's like you're being bombarded by thousands right. of events. So event help will, uh, event help will better uh, manage that. Okay. Yeah. okay. So there's two types of event requests uh, for event grid. So there's a subscription validation and then there's a notification. So generally speaking, notifications is what it's sending out. Uh, but there is a subscription validation method that is sent out when you uh, create subscriptions specifically when it's external. So if you have a webhook and you want to add that as a subscription, it's going to send a message first to validate um, that that uh, is a known provider. It's not just some old person subscribing to your event. Um, so I'll show that too for the demo. So for message schema, events are sent Azure, to Azure Event Grid uh, as an array, which can contain multiple objects. So you don't have to send one at a time. You can send a whole blob of events. Uh, and the array can have a Total size up to a meg, but must be an array. Of, must be an array. Can't, uh, so if you want to send one event, just put it inside an array. Can't just send the event without being inside an array. So the event schema is pretty much the same. So you have your topic, you have your subject. Um, you'll have an event type and time. Uh, you have a version and data version. So I'll show you an actual example. But the data part here of this JSON document is really the custom data that you're adding for your event. So Going down this way where I'm going to send an event, let's say I add a user to a, uh, an application, so that's my own event. So I know the data, I can put whatever data I want in there. But if it's something that you're listening to inside of Azure, it's going to have its own internal, for whatever data it is, it's going to fit its own uh, chunk of data there. So for reliable delivery, so Eventbrite uses HTTP response codes to acknowledge a uh, receipt of events. Uh, if there's ever a failure, it will go and perform retries. So it uses an exponential backoff retry policy. So it'll start at 10 seconds, it'll go to 30 seconds, a minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30, up to an hour. At that point, when it hits an hour, it's gonna go every hour until it hits 24 hours. At that point, the message is just gone. It's not gonna go into a queue and retry tomorrow. It'll just, don't even know that I'll live for 24 hours. Can you rev it to a failed queue though? You could, as one of your subscribers, just put in like a queue or something. So if you wanted to perform that kind of logic, you could always just have it go there. Yeah. And, so you can wire that up. So for security authentication, uh, there's three types. So you have event subscriptions. 
You have your publishing, and then you have webhook event delivery. So I'll show you the last one. So I'm going to create a webhook, and I'll send messages to it. And then when registering your own webhook, it's important to note that the grid, uh, event grid will send a post request the very first time. And all you need to do is echo back the validation code. So it's going to send a validation code. As long as you send back the code, it's going to say, OK, this is a, you know, I authorize um, this subscriber. But I'll authorize just a, this description. So I'll go into a demo now. So this is the application. It's an MSDN uh, uh, magazine article from, I believe, was last month. It might have been the month prior. But basically, I'll simulate being an HR application. I'm going to generate an event that I either added an employee or removed an employee. And in there, so in my app, uh, I don't, maybe I don't know what I, want, what, I, what I want to do. And later in time, I want to start adding some of these new functionalities. So when a new employee is added, I want to use a function uh, app, or a logic app, sorry, at the top. And I want to send them an email to say, welcome to the company. At the same time, maybe uh, I want to do more than a laptop. So I'll have a function that puts their uh, a request into a server queue. And then uh, also maybe I want to save that employee information to an external uh, database. So I'll demo the first two. Uh, third one is just, you'll get the gist of it through the sort of sample code. And then maybe, and then through filtering, you could also say, um, if I remove an employee, then just save the data to the database. Uh, but that's all I really need to do. Do you have any questions on just the context of the sample I'll walk through? Okay. So I'll show you, just I'll create the um, subscription for an event grid. So I'll click on create, create new resource. Filter down. So I'm going to create a new event grid topic. Can you make the font bigger? It's hardly visible. That's better. That's better? I wonder if your screen contrasts brightness affect the projector. Because I think if you make it less bright, maybe it can you try to reduce your brightness if it comes with the projector? <coughs> Can we can we try to sh shut off the lights? Sure. Yeah. It's uh, the the room is bright, yeah. Yeah, that's that's very So I'll create a new topic. I'm going to use my subscription. I'll create a new uh, Azure group. And I will pick my location. We'll use the East US. So there's not a lot to do. You can uh, script that if you want. So if you want to use Azure Automation to create your event topic, you can do that also. So there's just, I already got one built. Uh, but I'll just show you how quickly and easily it was to create one. That's going to go away. It'll take probably 25 or 30 seconds. And so I'm going to simulate now. Uh, I'm going to run this app. So this is a. Uh, let me check that. So I will just show you what I did so you have context for it. So Vision Studio, I say just create new function. So 
So this is going to create an Azure function locally. I can, I can also create one in the portal, but for the concept of creating a webhook, I want to have something outside of Azure. So I'm going to just do this rather than spin up a whole web API, uh, so to speak. So in here, for functions, you have two runtimes. If you're not aware, so there's the v1 runtime, which is on .NET, and then there's a v2 runtime, which supports .NET Core. So in this case, I would just say I want to create a simple HTTP trigger function. I'll say OK, and then that will give me the code I had before. Okay, can you tell me go to a new screen, the font go back to the small, small one? There we go. So in my function, uh, I've modified it slightly, but what I'm going to do is uh, I have a breakpoint. I'm going to run the function locally, and I'll use a tool called N, uh, nrock to be able to get an external HPS. So with Eventbrite, you need to use an HPS with it. And it's going to, as soon as I create that subscription, it's going to send down a validation code just to simulate the echo lag. So you can see down here, I have to actually add this in my code, where if it's in the subscription validation for event type, just echo it back. Otherwise, in this case, I want to actually process it. So this would be the second scenario where I have a function puts it into a queue. So I do something with that event, whatever I want with. So I'll run. <laughs> so I'm running now locally on port 7071. That's my function. Oh, could you increase your font size? <laughs> some points, but that function is basically triggering some events and uh, for the event to, to capture, right? Okay. I'm going to send an event from Postman, mm -hmm. and then that function will get triggered. Oh, that function yeah. will get triggered. He's yeah, I'll get triggered. Okay. So that, that is essentially... That is essentially... I'm doing this guy right here. Okay. Well, I'm really doing this guy. Oh. It's a it's an endpoint externally. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna do these two guys next, but I just want to show you the validation that's occurring when you add an external subscription. Thank you. What you type in is hard to read, so the contrast is poor and so small. Uh, yep. I can all 
I'll explain to each one. So this is my public address. See that for slash API slash one. I want to do some filtering. I have a prefix filter and I have a suffix filter. So in this case, I'll uh, just put this in here and I'll explain. So what this is, I'm going to create. So the name is just a name. The event type. So I have an employee added event. This is my subscription. It's an external webhook, and there's the uh, external IP that's going to be sent to. And it's only going to function if there's a x if there's a suffix that has development in it. So I'll show you what the payload looks like. So that makes more sense. I'm not going to create it because I already got that created. And I will need to update it with the IP. So again, so that's what I created there. Uh, I call the new employee subscription. Here's my arm ID. That will, it shows up afterwards once you create it. Event type is employee added. It's an external, it's a webhook uh, event type. And then there's my URL. So I'll just save that now. And now here's Visual Studio. I'm running my function locally. So it's now sent out a validation request because I changed the uh, endpoint. So now I have to validate that this is actually correct. So if I just step through it, so the event type is a subscription validation down here. Okay, and that's just going to echo back. This is a C sharp .net language? Or? This is C sharp. So I could have written a function and uh, JavaScript as well. So you're exposing those endpoints through ngRun? Yep. Okay. So you can see that this was saved at 3 o'clock. Um, and now if I want to send through a payload, let me make sure it should work. Okay, so here's a sample of payload. So uh, really the only thing that matters is the event type, so employee added, so that matches the topic that I created. The timestamp, obviously it's old, but I could have, you know, should be relevant. And the subject, so development, or department slash development, so that's where it's going to use the suffix to say only handle this as a development. So I put something else in there, it's not going to process this message. And then here's my data. So I'm adding myself, uh, my manager is myself at a different email address, and that's basically it. So if I submit this, so now it's coming to the Visual Studio. So that's it. So now I have a message flowing through from my external application that's not in Azure, submitting uh, an event. Azure's picking it up and it's redirecting it to, there's only one subscriber at this point. Um, actually, there's more. The, the logic app is going to kick in. All kinds of that. So you get, to, you get the email? It, it will show up, but I might have to change the I don't think I have to change something, but I'll step through what the next part of the demo is. So the next part of the demo, so down here I have three uh, subscribers. It's hard to see where it's blue. So basically I have my new employee, so that's the one I just demoed. Now I have a logic app, so that's going to process any message that comes in. It's going to send an email. So I'll walk through that, and then the third one is just remove employee. So that will call an actual function that's running inside Azure. And I'll show you that it gets the same payload doesn't need to echo back the validation, so that code is very simple. It doesn't have all this code that we're seeing right now.
did you specify all these three subscribers when you were creating the event feed or you no, have no, no, no. I'll show you. Well, the first one it gets created when you create the subscription. Mm -hmm. So for this one, I'll show you. Um, let's create a logic app. And I'll show you uh, how it works. Okay. So create a, a blank logic app. It's going to go into the designer as soon as you go into it. So here is what I would pick. So I would say I want to create a new event grid when an event grid event occurs. Okay, now we'll walk through all that, but I'll just go through the other one that I have. Here's my, uh, this is my logic app. Is it really that hard to see? So this is where, this would have been the next step that would have popped up in the, my previous screen. So here I'm picking my subscription. So I have my own, the resource type. So it's Microsoft Vendor.Profit. Here's the list of all the other uh, that you can see, so we have run topics, we have uh, container registry, uh, registry, we have uh, devices, IoT hubs, we have run topics, event hub, namespaces, media services, resource groups, subscriptions, service bus, namespaces, and storage accounts. So that's what's available right now. I know like other subscriptions, so like uh, Cosmos DB coming, SQL Server, all those other uh, Azure services right now are coming. Do you know why the text is so dimmed? I've noticed in the whole design of the the portal, I uh, have this issue. You cannot see well the text. For example, here, yeah. Yeah. Those choices are kind of dimmed, yeah. I think it's just because it's a it's font. Just color the projector. Yeah. The pro is your screen uh, hard to read, or is this a projector screen? What is it? Projector. Huh? Yeah, I think it's a projector. Yeah, the projector. Yeah, yeah, the brightness. It. It, somebody that removed the brightness should be adjusted. So here no, we have uh, <coughs> my event grid. I'm using the topics. I gave it a resource name. So for parsing, I then added a new step um, called parse JSON. So in here, you'll see on the right, it starts giving you options that you can start using right away. So I'm using data objects. So this is the data of the event. And then for the schema, you can type this out if you want, but uh, really all you need to do is go to your data. So just copy and paste that. So come here, use the sample payload. And if you paste it in, and say done, it's going to generate the schema that you see here for you automatically. So now my next step is I have a condition. So when the event type, is employee added. So it already knows that the event type since it's an event grid that I'm uh, hooking into. And then, so that's true, I'm going to send an email. So I'm just using my Outlook account, but you could do anything. You know, I'm going to hook in Office 365 if you want. So in here, it automatically, mm -hmm. because it parts the JSON, it knows all the field values that are available. So they show off the screen right here. But you can see there's employee email, employee ID, manager ID, so just picked up all that information. So here I'm going to say I'm going to send it to the employee. I'm going to have a subject of welcome, put the employee's name, that's picking up from the data. And then the body will be like hi, welcome to, so and so, that kind of stuff. Now if you come back to my 
and here's a sample email. This is the one from this morning. Well, send another one, but that's uh, what's happening right now. So again, I didn't have to create an app to send an email. I just created another serverless uh, ser just provisioned another serverless service inside of Azure. Okay, and then last one would be Inside Azure Functions, this is where now let's create this function and is inside Azure. So I don't have to do all the security information. So I'll pick a function app that I already have. And if I were to add a new function, I'll just show you the UI for that, what you would pick. Like that. So in here, just type in, so HP trigger would be just a, it's like a public uh, HP endpoint you can hit. So you don't want to do that one, otherwise you would have to handle the authentication. So functions already has an event grid uh, template already set up. You just type an event grid, but pick C sharp, uh, give it a name, that's it. Uh, and it will come to so it looks like this. So you can see the code is very minimal. It's not what I had in Visual Studio. I have the logs running at the bottom. So this should work. I come over to this one. So employee removed is really the only difference. It's not right now, I'll come back to it, but this would get function and you would see the output uh, happening here. So something like that. You would see at the bottom, here's my trace that's coming through, and here's the employee removed, and here's all my employee removed. So that one is just one that's happening inside of it. Any questions so far on just the current setup and demo? If you have to attach any document in the event, uh, is event create a good option or event hook in that case? Those are uh, multiple. Like physical documents? Yeah, or a file, image, anything. Uh, in the sample that I was doing here, it was a file. If I run this manually, so you can see it's picking up this information in the bottom here. Mm -hmm. And if I were to make this bigger, it is picking up the blob uh, account, like a file from blob storage. Okay. So you can do it what's with that? Yeah. Okay. So you can have the document be in some sort of physical storage, and you just send an event to say, here's the data that'll go here to get the rest of the data, and then you could parse it in. Right. Because somewhere I read that event hub uh, may not be a good option when you have uh, images or files attached to the event. No. Uh, but even uh, grid works. Yeah, I've been grid even for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
But it's not attached here, it's just a pointer to it, right? Exactly. It's just a pointer. So it's just so a JSON data. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's not really doing what he was asking about. We're physically sending them bottles? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it won't fit, right? I mean, it's only yeah, 64 kilobytes. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You have to split it across the one meg <laughs> of the yeah. array, right? <laughs> yeah. And then reassemble it. V64 encoding. Yeah. Okay, so some common scenarios for Redgrid. So the one I showed right now is just serverless applications. So I demoed with using Azure Functions and using uh, Logic Apps. So you can use those play very nicely into Redgrid. So Ops Automation, I mentioned early on. So you could use this for Ops. Right now, in the Ops side of the world, when you're going to the cloud, there's a lot of stuff you can do, and there's a scratch in their head about how to do this and be notified. So they can tap into a grid to be notified uh, of stuff that start up, that start down. If you go and start uh, provisioning some new VMs that have high load or high cost, you can all that also do this for scenario you wanna, um, this the next one. but you can use this for scenario you even wanna do compliance. You wanna make sure something gets spun up, you can have it reference the compliance script to make sure that it's meeting those requirements. Then for application integration, so you can use this for simple messaging between, uh, you can have a function app inside of Azure, and you can talk to another function app in Azure just by using a bank grid. So pricing. So event grid is pay per event, pricing model. It's the only pay per way to use. The first 100,000 uh, operations per month are free. Uh, then your price per million operations, so it starts at 73 cents Canadian. Uh, operations are defined as uh, event ingress, so every time you send a message, that's an ingress. If you do advanced matching, so that was where I had to prefix suffix. If I do that, that would count as a secondary event. Um, if you do delivery retries, that's also a third. So if you have to retry once, then that would count as another event. And then also just some management calls per se. Uh, those count. So just some scenarios. So if you go online to Azure.com or sorry, Azure Microsoft.com and look at a bank grid, there's some under pricing. They have these sample scenarios. They go in more depth, but so just highlight them a high level. So if you have five million events that you publish in a month, and they just go to one endpoint, it's basically about seven dollars that it's going to cost you. Well, second scenario is we only have five million events. We're going to two endpoints now. So that's in the case where now my demo I had a logic app and a function app. So those are two endpoints. And one million of those events require advanced matching. So that's where, let's say the employee removed, I just want to do something different on that case. Then uh, that comes out to 1160. So again, they go in full details of this pricing, but it comes out to just over $11. And then, so for scenario number three, again, you have two endpoints, you're doing a million advanced matching, and you're doing one million uh, that require two delivery attempts. Do they refund it if it's their fault? That all the retries you, and failures happen? Usually, they do. Like any cloud provider, if they break your SLA, yeah. then they, they'll refund. Yeah. I don't know what you would get back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's only 12 bucks. But if, if you had, like, <laughs> 50 million yeah, exactly. retries and whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the other thing. So, just so the statistics that tend to be used intensively, is it, what's the, give me an example of a, you know, of an environment, it's an example again where you. Well, Azure uses this internally. I tell Yeah, so every time, so you know when I was like spinning up those resources, and then it notified me that your resource is created, that's the number. So they're using it themselves to notify you or other services. That's something that you develop for you Something saw. I didn't have to do, no. Oh. But uh, internally, again, it's perfect for DevOps if you want to start listening to those events that are being created inside of Azure itself. You can start listening to those events and handle them accordingly. Or uh, you can create your own uh, messaging scenario. So maybe you don't want to go service bus or event hub or IoT. If you just want something very simple, work for serverless, so you don't have to provision uh, a complicated uh, IoT or infrastructure. Um, just work perfect for that. Maybe you don't have 
maybe a day delivery retry is fine. So if those things all meet your requirements, then this is perfect, it's very quick, it's very simple, and it's pretty cheap. So, so the fact that it works for many platforms is this because uh, the, the compatibility across platform comes from the fact you use an ASCII string for communication? And no, as long as you can talk HTTPS, HTTPS, you can use it. Yeah. Right? It's just an endpoint. So the endpoint, <coughs> I should have shown that one. A couple of slides before? No, just the new uh, So here, oh. <laughs> Here's my endpoint. I'm posting it here. So global Azure Summit event grid test. That is my topic. We just create a topic as an, uh, as an endpoint, and you're posting data to it. That's it. So that, that's, a, that's an IP address, effectively. It's an IP address. Yeah. You send something there, and then this is one one HTTPS thing. Right? It requires HTTPS to send the data to it. We can't just use HTTP. Well, so I go into And then down below, there's some basic uh, uh, monitoring. It has eight published, succeeded, don't have any that didn't match, or the time of the day, the last 30 days. The logic of use is based on the consistency of your protocol of moving full of string, right? Yeah. Effectively, right? Lighter. What do you mean by by that? Like so it's a serverless messaging system, which means that it's lighter and that there's nothing for you. Like you're not creating. A, so it's a no ops basically for you. You you don't need no ops really. Okay. okay. And it will scale based on demand. So you know, the more you throw at it, then eventually it will scale up. Okay. So Azure Migrate is really a game changing service and it's a key component to Microsoft serverless uh, strategy that they have right now. So, so, so if you would put that uh, in, in, in an kind of automation of process, you could be working some manufacturing place, for example, where you can have some signal coming from machine. And no, for the machine, I would do the event. Right? The event. Now you're sending a lot of data. Depends if it's a, if it's a, if it's crisis thing or. Yeah, this is more perfect for something inside Azure that you might want to manage. Oh. Or maybe you have an application that you want to like notify and add an employee or do an employee. It's a very specific event. So you don't have to tie all that logic into your application. You sort of grow and scale it out and pull in other services that need be. That's where you get the fan of. So maybe at first it was just email, but then maybe then you want to tie in, take that data and put it into a queue and have it do other things or save that data to a secret database. So the HR app, in this case, but for the demo context, I had no idea what's going on. It just says, I sent an event. Whatever you do with it is what you do with it. When you deploy this, do you kind of just recommend putting it like in a single subscription or something so you can kind of find it all? Because I mean, it's so dis disparate, it's so spread out, you know, being serverless. Do you just kind of, or do you just put it wherever you go? Is that? Uh, I would put it wherever, but you can put it inside your own resource group and just yeah. have, create resource groups that are very specific for that. So that you can kind the of logic of that container. So you can kind of back it up or control it because otherwise. Yeah, and then you can get the automation scripts. So you can put that into source code. Okay, so then you can have that, that as part of a deployment pipeline. You want to create these topics. Uh, okay, from a deployment perspective. Neat. Uh, what makes this more suited to microservices and serverless compared to service bus? Because as far as I know, you can also just spin that up and have your. Service bus is much slower. 
and it has a lot more of the enterprise capabilities built in. So this one's just fast, uh, it's light, and it will scale. So service bus has a lot more provision, a lot smaller, um, you know, SLA is a lot lower. And it's a lot more expensive. And it's a lot more expensive. But there is a uh, limitation for scaling for serverless, right? Now, th there is a, I think, thousand nodes or something like that. I, I don't remember the time. I don't know, but basically their serverless operating is built as a continuous scale. So in terms of the Azure functions, if you go to the consumption plan, you need to put limits on it, because if you if it comes to the hot flappy bird app, they're going to pay thousands or tens of thousands of dollars a month. From that resource. So you, there is the pros and cons of going servos. So just the con is it might cost you a lot more than you thought. Oh. So on the Azure, I mean, there's a question about Azure now, but since you're a big Azure guy, you probably know. Like, uh, like uh, if you, uh, it looks like the, the business model is about using this you know, platform on the server of Microsoft or whatever Azure we decide to build some hardware and run the bits per second um, and, the, and the storage. So is Azure also can run in a private server? Uh, yeah, you can run the Azure. Uh, it's called the Azure Stack. Azure Stack. Azure Stack. So okay, so the so pricing you, is different now. If you want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, they'll deliver you a shipping container, essentially, that is like <laughs> Azure for your data center. You mean a shipping container? You mean they're going to give you the server plus the software? Oh, uh, well, what, what, yeah. what, what, if you, what if you just want the code of Azure and you want to make your own server? They are, you're not. No. It's not going to happen. No. It ain't happening. Her name's Dell, it'll work. It's Dell. The, the Michael Dell. If Dell, Dell will deliver something nicely to you, <laughs> I'm sure. But yeah, there I know. So it's actually the the Microsoft stack or Azure stack runs on Dell hardware. I'm pretty right. sure that's, that's their trusted I'm, vendor. Yeah. Oh, they've got three or four right now. Yeah. Like Dell, you can get it from Cisco. They have Cisco. Cisco. Yeah. Uh, you can roll your own, but there's some severe limitations on it. Yeah. yeah. So that's your private cloud. But can we have it, private cloud within Azure itself? Can we? Uh, yeah, it's a multi-tenant environment, so. His forced tunnel thing was. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that's right. isolated. Right. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's basically you have a back channel if you're on the ground. There, there really is a limited number of use cases where you would have to go that That's far, true. Right? Yeah, that's true. And actually, you mentioned, sorry. No, no, go ahead. No. You mentioned about the long pulling and hammer pulling. And even native integration, even to support. I didn't understand what are those terminologies for. So that's where, like, you're, something's happening. Uh, maybe you're processing a video, right? So you have, a, let's say, you're using, a, if you're familiar with the cognitive services, there's like a video indexer. Yeah. So it's going to process that video, but it's not instant. So it'll give you back endpoints. And you can keep one of the ways, there's multiple, they can notify you. Um, but you can also just go to them and check is it done? <laughs> is it done? So, okay. Yeah, so you're always going to and asking, is it ready, is it ready? Whereas event grid, it's just going to send the event off. So you send the event, and then it will just provision it off for the different subscribers that are listening to that event. Okay. So it is a pushing model, yeah? Yeah. I have a question about the pricing. You, you mentioned, if you can bring up the slide, you mentioned about ingress events. So it's from the point of view of Azure, the, other, the events that you sent to Azure, isn't it? Yeah, so in this case, you're sending 5 million events. Uh, yeah, so you're sending 5 million events. So those events are going to get sent to two different endpoints. And then of the 5 million, one, 1 million requires advanced matching. So that's, so it's 5 million times 2. So you're at 10 million right now, you're at 11 million. With so this guy, so you're at 12 million events. This is basically how that comes out. But the, the first uh, uh, slide, where you, where you say the, the ingress thing, because you, c you could have a logic inside the, the function that initiates events, so that would be outgress, yeah, events, or how, how they... No, they don't it. charge you for that, no. right? Unless there's an additional delivery attempt. Yeah, because the, 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 other, the, the previous uh, slide... Um, okay, no, you yeah, the, the list of operations is what he's asking. Yeah. yeah, next. One more. No? No, you gotta go back. Towards pricing. Yeah. Towards pricing. You had the list of First. operations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right there. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah. event event ingress is when the JSON hits the man hits the API, right? Yeah. And then the matching is where I can do it on the suffix or prefix. I want to match only on that data. And then the auxiliary attempt. So if I try this first time and it didn't work, it's going to manage to retry. So it doesn't tell you, hey, it didn't work. It's just fired again. I send a message off. I get a 200 back that it happened. It was long as the event grid got it. So event grid will manage to retry. So it's going to try and send it to all the sub uh, subscribers. So an example of, you give the example of the HR, I mean, there's no million of employee, obviously, right? And uh, maybe 10, uh, so what the, um, what's an example, uh, is it software development when you want to manage or curate your work, or is it software operation when things screw up, or all of the above, or? All of them, you, uh, your imagination is your limit for how you want to do it. It's good, so quality control in real time, whatever, kind of thing. Yeah. Or monitoring. So if you want to have one function talk to another function, then you can just pass it an event. to say, here's the data from the output of this function, and send it as an event. Kind of automate the uh, problem handling. Yeah. Cool. You good? Yeah. All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Basically, what we were just doing is asking questions, and um, yeah, if anybody has additional questions, Zach is still around. Um, Arlen in the back is actually an Azure MVP as well. Uh, I'm a Visual Studio MVP, so if there's questions, just general questions that you guys have, um, you know, fire away. Uh, we're more than happy to talk. Jen is actually a Dynamics MVP, so if you have Dynamics questions, um, so it's MVP Plus, so if you want to play on your hydro prices, you can talk to Jen. <laughs> 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 So yeah, um, it, you know, if you guys have any additional questions, fire away. Other than that, um, yeah, let me know. Does anybody have a question? We can move right into the closing ceremonies and uh, and draw for the prizes and let you guys go early and you can enjoy the rest of the sunshine. So who wants to do that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let me grab my laptop and we'll. No, no, let's go. 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 No, Uh, follow us there. There are uh, 
Jeff Brain stickers out front. Uh, please take them. My wife doesn't want them in my house anymore. Uh, please, please take them. Uh, if you are looking for the slides, uh, this is the full GitHub uh, repo address. So it's Rag Meetup. I also created a bit.ly for it. I've already posted this on the bottom of the uh, Meetup page in the comments section, so you can find it there as well. Uh, I've, all of the slides from today are already posted and up as well as links to the speakers, their Twitter. Um, Zach, I didn't know have you guys information, so I just linked source, but if you want me to change it, okay, uh, I, I, will, I can, I can add, add stuff on there. Right? I can add your uh, yeah. visual contacts as well. Okay. Uh, again, uh, Jeff Brains is obviously a sponsor, so special thanks to all the sponsors. This is actually Arlen's uh, company. Arlen uh, kicked in for the room and a lot of the different um, beverages we had this morning. So thank you again to all the sponsors. Big round of applause. For all the food uh, and we bought 50 lunches for ourselves times 250 spots so they spent a lot of money today so a special thank you to Microsoft as well so uh, everyone got one of these if you didn't get one of these see Arlen he'll get you a sheet for that and everyone um, is going to have a chance to win this so what I'm going to do is I have everyone's name in here and maybe what I'll do Kelly can I just borrow this slot here I'm going to shake it up dump it out and so I have everyone's name, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do this. So uh, I'm going to draw for the jet brains. Uh, just, does it go first name, last name, or last name, first name here? Last name, first name. Okay. Avik Patel? Oh, I think he left. Okay, well, he's going to get the, uh, the jet brains, so I will <laughs> make sure that uh, he gets contacted for that. Let's talk about Cerebrata. Mike Johnson. <laughs> so there you go, Mike. So Mike got a one-year subscription to Cerulean for Cerebrata. So. And... And the Ops Julie winner is Greg Elby. There you go. Uh, if this is unreadable, I do have a PG uh, PNG of this. I can just cut it. Yeah. Okay, you're very welcome. I can't copy paste. Uh, I do have two uh, T-shirts left as well. So these are Azure based T-shirts. I think Lori was wearing this one. And we have this guy, it's kind of cool. So we got these from uh, one of the Azure people in Seattle. So I believe there are a medium and a small, unfortunately. So uh, <laughs> who gets these, you know, you can give to your kids or whatever. So, uh, so we'll do this. And whoever wins first can have the first pick of whatever size they want. So first winner, Demica. I saw him. Oh. Well, this one I'm not mailing, so you got to be here to win that one. So. <laughs> uh, okay. I drew that. Uh, Avic, again, because he had two. So. Uh, Jim Protulis. Hey, there you go. So you can have small or medium. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be, uh, you know, give it to your kids or somebody. You take the work. And finally, it's Jason Hankins. Oh, he left. Oh, did he? No. I worked with him, but yeah. <laughs> Grant Tate? I yeah. won't tell him. Hey! Thank you very much. Thank you all again. Uh, please follow us, uh, as I said, on um, the different uh, areas. We do have a couple more announcements. So we did mention about the uh, Global yes. DevOps Bootcamp. A uh, special shout out to, um, again, CTT DNUG. We This is the event, it's kind of hard to read, this is the event we're um, hosting on Wednesday, Microsoft SQL Server 100% Online Schema Migrations. Uh, it's going to be at the Country Hills Community Library in Kitchener. There's about 35 people already signed up, so you can find us here on meetup.com if you're interested in doing SQL Server migrations. That's going to be with Michael Swart, who is actually a SQL Server MVP. So he's a really great speaker. He just came back from Victoria speaking about SQL. So if you have more uh, questions about SQL in general, you can come see him. 
Uh, we talked about the power of the cloud in this uh, it's June 22nd. As well, uh, Mary, who's a runner of multiple groups, uh, is speaking on April 26th. Is that Thursday? Yes, sir. Thursday, uh, Waterloo Data Science and Data Engineering Group. They already got 543 members, so they're doing really well. Uh, productionizing analytical models for the real world. Would you like to say anything about it, or does this say everything? Uh, so what we're doing there is you can build analytical models with Azure Machine Learning Studio, and I will explain how you convert them to a web service, and then actually just can call them from your web application. Cool. So this is at the new terminal building on King Street West in Kitchener. So uh, you can find it there. And again, here's the meetup link down the bottom, Waterloo Data Science and Data Engineering. So if you want to get more information about that, or you can talk to Mary in person before she leaves, I'm sure she'll be happy to tell you more about it. So, uh, and that's it. That's that's all we got to talk about. So we went through all of this. Uh, please follow us on meet our, on. Uh, Please link us on Meetup, please follow us on Twitter, and uh, we would love to have your uh, support as well. Uh, I do have, I did have the, um, the Waterloo Region uh, Meetup group. There's already comments, I posted the link there. This is the repo. You can see we have everybody listed, as well as uh, their information down the bottom here. So you can find all the speakers info down here as well. So thank you again. Thank you for coming out on a beautiful Saturday. And Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. I said to, I said to Arlen, I was like, oh yeah, I wonder if Greg wants to say something. Greg has an announcement as well. Yeah. So we've got. Uh, I work for the city of Cambridge. So just up the road here is our city hall. Um, on May first, we've actually got a, a technology conference. So that's a Tuesday. Um, it's in the, um, the the big room on the main floor. Um, we've got Eli coming talking about uh, Microsoft. Um, Cognitive Services. Um, we've got a Microsoft partner coming and speaking on Internet of Things, uh, a live streaming uh, session as well, and the other one is, I knew I was going to forget, uh, oh, sorry, Autonomous Vehicles. Um, so we've got a, a law firm coming down from Toronto speaking on that. So free lunch, free parking. It's called Convergence Cambridge. So if you look on it, right, Convergence Cambridge. Sign up, we've got room. Um, and I'll send you their free parking pass and everything as well. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right, and that's a Tuesday, right? Tuesday? It's a Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday, May 1st, so. so yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you can get some time off first, go check it out. Thank you all again. Uh, join the meetup, follow us on Twitter, and uh, we'll see you again hopefully in June. So, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you.